Adventure is the reason many of us emigrate. Compelled by what is around the corner, our town, or even overseas, we wander. Growing up in Dublin, Ireland, I gawk at the airport lights in the distance. I long to be whisked away to the wild west coast of North America. I spent 10 incredible years in San Francisco. But in my early 30s, things were changing rapidly here. Technology was transforming lives. The economy was booming. By the mid-90s, you had to work hard at being a slacker in San Francisco. Staring at the Microsoft Airglass, I wondered where all those irrepressible, reckless urges of my Irish youth had gone traded for responsibility, dedication, and ambition. What was I thinking? Coming from a computer graphics job, and it's, it's pretty stressful, it's crazy hours. You know, it's a 20 hour day business, so I've been working nights from like seven till three in the morning for three years. Long hours, deadlines, it's very high intensive. Three years earlier, I had read an article about a man who had walked 2,600 miles from Mexico to Canada on the Pacific Crest Trail. His story stayed with me. I could just envision this guy walking in a quiet wood, whistling away to himself without a care in the world. No keys, no wallet, no cell phone. It sounded like a time to reflect on life, nature, and the bigger picture obscured by modern city living. Dale Brosnan moved to San Francisco from Dunedin in New Zealand 10 years ago. The idea of walking from Mexico to Canada fascinated Dale also. Of the contractors to coordinate, it's just an, an ongoing battle that's, you know, far too stressful. We convinced also ourselves to quit our jobs, cash in our retirement funds, and make our voyage of discovery. So that's, that's why I'm really happy to be getting out of here, that's for sure. The Pacific Crest National Scenic Trail is two feet wide and 2,626 miles long. It follows the great mountain backbone of the Western United States. The PCT passes through some of the most breathtaking scenery in North America. Starting at Campo, a small town on the US-Mexican border, the trail strikes north through Southern California's mountains and deserts that surround the Los Angeles metropolis. Now the PCT climbs high into the Sierra Nevada, past ancient glaciers and timbered valleys, and onto the Cascades. Following a procession of volcanoes and rainforests, the trail reaches Manning Park, 150 miles east of Vancouver. It's not every day you go out and walk 22 miles a day, you know, and with blisters on your feet, and, and have to do it, you know. So. All in all, it's just it's just a big challenge all the way around, physical, mental. We don't have a lot of experience. Uh, Miles has been in the uh, the Boy Scouts, and we're really leaning heavily on that. This whole trip, we've read over in books. We know exactly how to do it according to the book, which, as stupid as it sounds, is actually a lot better than nothing. You've got beers, right? And there could be cougars and poison oak falling off a mountain. You know. A hurtling speed, um, you know, to, to name a few, drowning in a fort. A, a, what? The blisters definitely do hurt a lot. There's no doubt about it. Blisters. I, you know, I'm just really. I've got these little urban you know, city boy feet. I'm from a city. I've lived in a city all my life, so I'm really curious to see what happens to our feet. And I would surprise me. We got a lot of blisters. You know. It's your feet that carry you these 2,700 miles. Nothing else. The feet are the foundation of a long-distance hiker. 
The foot contains 52 bones, a quarter of all the bones in the human body. Strong feet are a required trait for every long distance backpacker. Without them, walking these distances can prove a painful, frustrating, though not impossible task. We began training by running on the beach and walking at every opportunity. Finishing the PCT on our schedule required walking between 21 and 25 miles a day for four and a half months. It's a race to reach Canada before the September rains and snow start in the Northern Cascades. I walked all around the city for about a month and then I started uh, running on the beach, getting some walk around and that's, that's basically really carried me through. Food is a crucial part of the planning process. We had to bring enough high calorie, light food to last four and a half months. We spent weeks researching and experimenting with ideas to come up with a varied diet that would give us the fuel to propel us 2,600 miles. Hours upon hours spent chopping. We built a food dryer and set about drying hundreds of pounds of bananas, apples, mushrooms and tomato sauce. You know, I'm going to leave these dry up top because they've been here for two days, so I'll just let them they'll dry slowly up here so they're almost ready. I didn't even chop these ones up, but you can see they shrunk down a lot. So when we can put all these other trays in here and start drying the apples. These are tomato leathers, two days dry in the dryer. So now I take them out and I kind of break them up a bit by hand and then I put them through the blender to get them nice and powdery so they'll dissolve better in water. Uh, we're mixing, mixing up our muesli. About, I don't know how much we're going to come out with, probably 150 pounds maybe. 100 pounds. We've bought uh, 25 pounds of, of barley flakes, triticale, and uh, rolled oats. And we've got about 12 pounds of oat bran. we got like 50 up. pounds of powdered milk coming. And then we got lots of like little five pound bags of shredded coconut, nuts, raisins. Bob's your uncle. So we got 30 boxes, 30 pickup points, all through California, Washington, and Oregon. So this is enough food for four days, basically. This is going to Clear Lake. So we have four dinners. Looks like at least two or three of these are corn pasta. Couscous, muesli, we have a lot of muesli. A couple and a half each a day. Six, seven, eight, nine. Power bars, we have two of these each a day. We have a lot of these. There's three leathers off to Independence. Good luck, see you there. Dried milk, potatoes, trail mix. An awful lot of trail mix. Banana lettuce, mixed vegetables, cocoa, crackers, tangs, some vegetables, some Parmesan cheese, some herbs, toilet paper, and that's it. That's all we're bringing. Friday, traffic in the city, what can you do? Everybody's getting home early, but no one really is. Come on! You know, I just quit my job. Sold my, got rid of my place, got rid of my dogs. Basically, I've uprooted my whole life to walk from Mexico to Canada, and it's kind of scary because I don't know if I'm going to make it out there a week. Can't wait to hit that trail. That's all I can say. It's going to be amazing. I hope my feet don't give out on me. I'm very worried about my feet. I think I'm going to get a lot of blisters. Last day in town. Running around, a couple of little errands, and. Uh, Quiet night tonight, and uh, we're out of here. Fun begins. It's the border patrol. He's actually not coming up here. So, Miles, how are you feeling? Feeling great. I can't wait to get the hell out of here. Start walking. It's amazing. A whole year of uh, preparations and hard work, and we're finally here. All comes down to this. This one spot, your pack, we're ready to go. It's incredible, man. I can't believe it. 5859, 59510. Five, so people left this morning, huh? Fred Smith, Tasmanx, California. This is it. 
preparation that we've been going for and it's time to hit north. How are you feeling, Dale? I'm hurt. Why are you hurting? Uh, just my feet are killing me, Miles. Yeah? How many miles have you walked now? Uh, what did we do? I don't know, we've done about 43 miles. Yeah, just a little bit of foot pain, nothing too serious. There goes the Pacific Ocean, folks. I'm just trimming it down, I'm trimming everything I have. We're all too heavy, so I'm just gonna start cutting things. Everything's getting cut. I don't need essential stuff only. I'm putting a mylar covering over my umbrella, so that'll help uh, reflect the sun's rays and uh, keep me a lot cooler as we're walking through the San Felipe Desert. It could be really, really hot out there. How's your umbrella working? So far, so good. Uh, I'm just down to hear the uh, tape popping off. So we'll see. 23 miles of it lasts. We expect it's uh, going to be about 100 degrees. It's already close to that. Uh, we're both carrying about 16 to 18 pounds of water alone. So um, hopefully we'll be there in eight, nine hours and just time to get down for dinner and have some fresh water. Okay, let's go. Oh, Jesus. One thing well, you didn't hear him. Let's just go, out. man. Get out. I'll go. For sake. Just take your time, will you? Yeah, well, I, think you I, don't, run I don't think running is the ticket. Because he's a big one. How do you know? How do you? Ice, did you see his tail? That was a lot of rattles. Old, that's older. You know he's going to strike. Well, you don't know that, do you? He's supposed to be, like, moving off. Are you coming? Yeah, I'm coming. Same time? Yep. I'm going to really go for it. All right, so go. So we got to go together. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Yiddly, 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 we got on this trail and it started leading up this creek and the further we go up it the lesser and lesser the trail becomes and it's not actually on the map which is kind of scary. We lost about four hours this morning wandering around following a creek and uh, just when we decided to turn back we happened to run into like uh, six, six men and two women illegals cruising the border from the border I should say and uh, but they were cool we gave them some food and uh, said goodbye and uh, now we're just hustling our way up to Mount Laguna and uh, you could take a good look that's where we came from there's the Mexican border straight ahead like the whole pour right across the front of my yeah. toes that whole pad is sore our bodies were unaccustomed to walking yeah. these distances yeah. the first few I weeks on the pacific they, crest trail we struggled shoes. to adapt yeah. Yeah. we were both experiencing stress yeah. injuries i trained a lot in these shoes so they've been pretty well worn already and you know cheap tennis shoes well just checking out the feet miles Got some uh, pretty good blisters here. I'm gonna do a little trimming. Yeah. Possible. Not so good with my left hand, so folks, this could get a little messy. Look at that. Boy, is my shin killing me right now. A week into the trip, disaster struck. Our ambitious pace and the strain of carrying extra water loads had made my shins swell. 
the act of walking had become a slow and painful experience. How's the leg feeling, Miles? Not feeling too good, but... What do you think's wrong with it? it? Sounds like a bongo drum. Hopefully it'll just uh, completely... I think it'll start healing straight away once I get up. So here I am at a while, let's stay in nine. And this is where the Pacific Crest Trail's got me. I have a shin splint and I'm sitting here three days, my foot in this position, waiting for it to heal. Dale rested his feet for two days and then carried on alone. After a week of recovery, I set off after him. He was over 100 miles ahead of me by now. We had agreed to meet at Kennedy Meadows in two and a half weeks. This meant walking between 25 to 30 miles a day to catch him. So I've been on the road now three weeks. Took a week off though with a damaged shin, but I'm back now feeling really good. I'm doing about 30 miles a day. Del went on ahead of me. He was seven days ahead of me, but now I think he's, maybe I pulled it back to four or five. But it's been pretty amazing backpack alone. It's just been an amazing challenge to me to figure out how to map read and survive in the woods and judge the water and judge the food. And so I got, Three months and three weeks left. I just hope I can keep my energy up. I wound around the Los Angeles basin through the smoggy San Bernardino and San Gabriel mountain ranges, across the San Andreas Fault and the Mojave Desert. I was apprehensive about hiking the Mojave alone. I descended to the desert floor at sunset and walked as far as I could in the cool of the evening. The trail parallels the LA and California aqueduct that steal water from the north to give rise to an ever-expanding Southern California. It was hard to think of the Mojave as a desert at all. Below my feet flowed millions of gallons of freezing snowmelt. There are holes at intervals in the canal where you can refill your bottle. Well, I just made it across the Mojave. It wasn't that bad. I did it in the cool part, but I got a, another 17 miles to go to Atchery. I'm looking forward to a hotel room and a bed. And I'm about a week, uh, three days behind Dale, possibly two now, so I'm catching him. I just hope I can make it before the 15th. I'm not feeling too bad, I'm feeling pretty good. Drinking lots of water, eating good food. The Sierras gradually rise out of the flat deserts, causing massive turbulence where the coastal winds clash with the rising desert air. Average wind speeds here are between 20 and 40 miles per hour. The Tehachapi Mojave wind farms are some of the most productive in the world. Its 5,000 windmills generate enough electricity for half a million people. Finally, on June 15th, I reached the promised land, Kennedy Meadows. My desert days were behind me. I was greeted by an entirely different landscape. The mighty peaks of the Sierra Nevada is straight ahead. Section H of the PCT, also known as the John Muir Trail, one of the great remaining wilderness areas of the American frontier. Uncrossed by roads and places for 150 miles, it is, arguably for those who've seen it, the finest mountain scenery in North America. The whole John Muir Trail was just unbelievable. It was so beautiful. Everywhere you turned, everywhere you looked, it was just spitting out a, a beautiful image everywhere. It was fabulous. You know, we went for a, a period of about 10 days there that we just saw the most amazing scenery. It is also the most dangerous section of our journey. Avalanche, bears, drowning, or falling down a steep slope are constant concerns. Well, we need 10 out of this lot. We're gonna go from uh, Kennedy Meadows straight through to the Vermilion Valley Resort. And uh, hopefully with one day of wetly climbing. Uh, so yeah, about ten days is what we're looking for. 
Lacking snow training, and despite the advice of more experienced hikers, we headed north. Our packs must have weighed 50 pounds, loaded down with 10 days of food and snow equipment. This early in the season, leaving Kennedy Meadows, within half an hour you leave all the day hikers behind, and ahead lies a deserted alpine wilderness. For the next 10 days, we were in a wonderland of high mountain passes up to 13,000 feet. 13,200 feet. Highest point of PCT. Next! Next is Glen Pass. Over there. We were surrounded by deep canyons and thousands of blue snowmelt lakes. The snow was um, very scary at first, but I was amazed by how, um, how easily we got around it, you know, and how we dealt with the uh, conditions we'd never, you know, ever come across before. Neither of us knew anything about snow. I thought we did a really good job at getting through it and not getting hurt and not getting lost. Like every challenge on this trail, you give it your devoted attention, make unhasty navigational decisions, and absorb rumors and advice about the terrain ahead. Within a few days, we felt quite adept in these high mountain altitudes. You got the speed record, man. That was good. Woo. So we um, try to save on garbage weight by taking the wrappers off the power bars before, before we um, came out here. So as you can see, they've all melded together into one great big chunk of power bar glop. So. Now to get a piece of power bar, we gotta cut it off with a knife. All the flavors mixed up. How the weight, Miles? Too heavy? It's too heavy. By like six inches too short on that rock. The High Sierra is one of the mildest major mountain ranges in the world. By mid-July, the snowpack is melting fast and rivers are swollen. The trail turns into an obstacle course as we try to avoid getting wet whenever possible. Mighty oh, cold. So here we are, we're about to uh, hit Tuolumne Meadows. We're coming out of the Sierras, the High Sierras, after like I don't know, uh, 11 or 12 days. And the bizarre thing is it started to snow right as we got here. So uh, it's been a very interesting 12 days. Tuolumne Meadows to Sonora Pass traverses the final high altitudes of the Sierra Nevada mountains. I remember this section as a brutal series of ascents and descents. What do you think of it so far? Well, we're lost. It's hot and we're climbing out of this lake. I think it's lousy. It's Sunday morning, should be in bed. This is Jim Everett. Yeah, At 62, that. Jim Everett is an inspiration to everyone that meets him. Yeah, it is for lunch and left times. Jim is racing more than the approaching winter. He's been battling leukemia for years. And now with the cancer in remission, He's taken the opportunity to fulfill his dream of walking from Mexico to Canada. As you can see, Jim's having mosquitoes for, for breakfast. I'm having a you mixture of muesli and mosquitoes, sort of an M&M's, if you will. Yosemite is infamous for its ferocious mosquitoes that thrive in the melting snow. But uh, yes, it's mosquito country, and we've been in this for a few days now, and it's quite charming. Um, yes. Uh, especially when you've run out of DEET, like we have, and, uh, and our cooker doesn't work, our uh, water filter sucks, we hate that. Um, basically, but we're having the time of our lives, yeah. Trail is a pit. Oh yeah, I didn't mention how the trail was so steep and just like, I mean, there's rivers running down the trail. Uh, oh, that's right. Our new shoes, they suck. <laughs> Blisters, you know, pain. By Sonora Pass, we had hiked over a thousand miles, taken over two million steps, worn out two pairs of shoes, five pairs of socks, 
and eating over 200,000 calories each. I lost 10 pounds over these seven weeks. The strain of my solo hike and the high Sierras had left me exhausted. I would never have quite the same stamina again for the rest of the summer. My feet hurt, I hate downhills. Apart from some ominous foot pains, Dale was at his peak performance level. His weight remained constant and for the rest of the summer, he would always hike ahead of me. Well, here we are with Leo and Richard, a couple of friends of ours who have decided to join us for uh, section J. J on the PCT. Uh, this is their third day. And uh, how are we feeling, guys? <laughs> uh, my feet hurt like hell. And nothing left in them. I have more blisters than skin right now. More blisters than skin at this point. Right. Yeah, I think I'm going to lose at least three toes. Oh. Start skin to your left leg. But that's the one doing all the work, huh? Oh, that's what it's, uh... That's my, more my arm. Your arm? Yeah. yeah. this point, what would you change if you were coming back to do another section with us? What would you change right now? Shoes. Shoes. Different shoes. shoes. I have good shoes. <coughs> so. I think, I, I think uh, you know, other than in the snow, I'd definitely go with tennis shoes, running yeah. shoes. Yeah. Um, and also, I'd, I'd ditch about half my pack weight. So, yeah. I mean, my packs, I'm carrying a lot of extra stuff. Like, the ice axe was good for like a couple hundred yards, but Hell. Oh, I've got so blessed blessed it's just sheer hell. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Great. I got a hole in my toe. Wow, that's lovely. Yeah. But I am taking very good care of it. That's good. 1,000 miles and it's still there. By now, many hopeful hikers that started at the Mexican border have dropped out due to injury. Groups of hikers walk together, united by a common goal. Bruce Gerard, a student from Connecticut, and Sean Ferris, a student from San Diego, become close hiking companions. Everybody has dreams about what they want to do in life and where they want to be, and there's a lot of times I feel like I was born in the wrong century, in the wrong era, because I feel more at home, like, out in the woods than I do. I grew up in the big city, and I never felt that that was really the place where I belonged. There's sort of this fascination with the unknown, maybe. Put that together with desire, willingness to uh, face your fears, even though it comes along with all these discomforts, you know, your willingness to push through that. And your world gets bigger as you do that, you know. Once you push through those fears, you just have the, all these doors open to you. Slowly, descending along the Sierra crest again, the altitude begins to fall. And after a month in the Sierras, hiding from America's summer, temperatures are soaring again. As we leave the snow behind, finding water becomes a life-assuring priority. Every time it seemed like I'd fill a bottle full of water, I would just hold the water and just say thanks, you know, just, I don't know, to who, could have been the nature, could have been to something, but just knowing that I can dip a bottle of water into a stream and drink it was just the most thrilling thing possible. The geology of the Northern Pacific Crest Trail is dominated by the Cascade Mountains. Following the Ring of Fire, a volcanic perimeter that surrounds the Pacific Ocean, we pass by a series of huge volcanoes. Lassen and Shasta are the first.
All of a sudden, the PCT takes an abrupt swing to the west. We hike for miles around the mighty Shasta. Mount Shasta stands unchallenged by any other mountain in this area. Its snowy cap rises out of the scorched lava beds. It dominates the horizon for weeks. Mount Lassen is an active volcano. Molten magma six miles below the surface makes geysers boil and mud pots bubble. Well, he's actually shedding. That's probably why he was, he's blind in one eye from shedding. Oh. The Oregon border from California, and there's a sign that said we had about 900 miles left to go. And just mentally, it was very tiring. We've just covered 1,700 miles, and uh... You know, it's not every day that happens. This is a big breakthrough. This out, California's a huge state, but amazing. Truly an amazing place. I mean, such contrast everywhere. I'm knackered. Yeah, it's been really hard. I'm not gonna say it's been easy. It's been bloody exhausting in places, but I'm feeling really tired now. I think I felt a lot stronger 900 miles ago, but we're, you know, we're still gonna plot along. When I was a child, I read about the Great Migration West by American pioneers to reach Oregon. I must have felt a similar euphoria at reaching Pilot Rock, a beacon guiding us out of dry Northern California and into Oregon. The promise of flatter, more fertile lands lay straight ahead. With a crash of symbols, the magnificence of Oregon bursts into view. Crater Lake. Three-fingered Jack. Mount Tielsen. And the Three Sisters. Mount Hood. These American treasures were worth walking thousands of miles to see. Ask most PCT hikers what they think about when hiking, you usually get the same answer, food. Walking and sleeping, we dream about food. <laughs> there are only so many meals of muesli and nuts you can eat. Mm, smell that, that's definitely cheesecake. We dream of cheesecake, hamburgers, ice cream. Eggs, Burning 5,000 calories a day, a PCT cake, hiker must eat pudding, at least twice French that of a normal fries, person to avoid rings, eating himself browns, or anybody else roast alive. Beef, roast chicken, roast anything. We eat three huge meals a day, starting with muesli and high calorie shakes, usually pasta for lunch and dinner and a constant snacking of gorp and chocolate. A Snickers bar is among a hiker's most guarded possessions. So here's the tomato letters. They're about four or five months old, and we started off using a lot of these on the trip. Drop them in there, takes a minute or two. Put in the mashed potatoes. Delicious. Mmm. But we've been in the woods all day and we pop out and nice clearing here full of huckleberries. <laughs> <laughs> 